There was once a time when there was only one car model available, and it was cheap. Ford's Model T. I sold more, there was more than 250,000 Model T's sold a year by 1914. The price dropped from $950 in 1908 to just $290 in 1924. Auto registrations rose as sales went up. 8 million in the early 1920s to 26 million by 1929. The auto industry became the nation's largest business. By 1929, more than 1 million people worked in the auto industry or related businesses. Workers did not have the opportunities or options offered to us today. They could either work the assembly line or find another job, one often needing a high school diploma. Ford modified the assembly line system used in the meatpacking industry. This change allowed the time of production processes to be cut in half. A positive result was that workers could be quickly trained for a job. Ford also shortened his workday to eight hours at a time when most workers were working between 12 and 14. He also doubled his wages to $5 a day. However, there were many negative results for workers that arose as well. Unskilled assembly line workers had no chance for advancement. Also, workers had boring, repetitive, and in even dangerous jobs in exchange for the benefits. Ford's workers were required to live a clean life, which included no liquor or tobacco, tobacco use. Do you think that training workers to do one specific for job as Ford did is a good thing or a bad thing? Automaker Henry Ford had the idea to create an assembly line of workers, all with a special skill. As a new car model proceeded down the assembly line, workers would apply their unique skill and the car would be completed much faster than was previously possible. This method worked so fast, in fact, that by 1925, Ford boasted that a Model T car was completed every 10 seconds. The result? The Model T's price dropped from $850 to $290 by 1924. By 1929, 23 million cars were driving on America's ever-expanding roadways. The auto industry changed with the advancement of the automobile technology. Cars are such a fundamental part of our existence that it is impossible to imagine what life was like before they were invented. But the automobile changed life. The automobile allowed rural people to have greater contact with their neighbors and it allowed city dwellers to visit the countryside. Americans could now vacation without the restrictions of train schedules. The automobile also created new social opportunities and freedoms for teenagers. Movie technology also changed during the 1920s. Silent films really weren't all that silent. As patrons read along with lines of dialogue on the screen, large orchestras played an early version of a soundtrack along with the action on screen. To accommodate these large orchestras, movie palaces were built with room for a full orchestra to accompany the picture. The Roxy Theater in New York City opened in 1927 with a 6,200 viewer capacity. In 1927, sound was added to pictures as talkies were introduced. Radio broadcasting also expanded. In fact, it began when KDKA in Pittsburgh became the first radio station in 1920. KDKA was still asking people to contact the station to confirm that they were actually hearing the station when it broadcast the 1920 presidential election results. By 1922, there were 600 radio stations in the U.S. 600 radio stations in just two years. Between 1923 and 1930, 60% of American families purchased a radio. Listen to this clip from KDKA, their presidential election coverage. It is now apparent that the Republican ticket of Harding and Coolidge is running well ahead of Cox and Roosevelt. At the present time, Harding has selected more than 16 million votes against some 9 million for the Democrats. We'll give you the state vote in just a moment. But first, we'd like to ask you to let us know if this broadcast is reaching you. Please drop us a car, address station KDKA, Westinghouse, East 
KYW in Chicago became the first specialized radio station by broadcasting opera six days a week when it went on the air in 1921. NBC became the first national radio station in 1926, and CBS followed in 1927. The first radio sports broadcast was the Jack Dempsey Georges Carpentier boxing match on July 2, 1921. Radio broadcasting was different in the early days compared to what we're used to today. Instead of buying commercial slots, companies would sponsor entire shows. One example of this was the popular Texaco Star Theater. Hit shows included westerns and comedies. Media programs of the time often reflected the common thoughts and prejudices of the era. One of the most famous shows was Amos and Andy, a comedy about two African Americans from the country trying to make it in the big city. Amos and Andy was not politically correct by today's standards, but show, but the show was very popular in its time. Here's a vid, an audio clip. Uh, Mr. Rodney here is going away on a trip. He wants a chauffeur that his girlfriend ain't going to make no play for. The job pays $200 a month. But unless the fella is really stupid, he ain't going to get the job. Now... What did you say to that, Mr. Brown?